I made a notebook scat library to solve some of the problems I was running into regularly. And it goes without saying that I love the library, I mean I wrote it, but I love it in part because it fundamentally changes how I approach designing OpenSCAD parts. And at this point, I can't imagine not using it. And apart from me, I've been delighted that others seem to like it too. Cue the music. The library is not actually that new. I've made some changes to it recently for sure, but that music clip is like two years old and I never published it. I guess because editing code features to music is a little weird for sure, but I'm gonna own it. So those were the features and obviously it all revolves around smoothing transitions and rounding. That's because rounding and internal radii in particular can be a real pain to do in OpenSCAD, particularly as you start moving away from 90 degree angles and that effectively puts a complexity ceiling on the part that can be produced. And that's a big problem, especially when you consider how important radii are for reducing stress concentrations in parts, etc. Furthermore, the library, by focusing on the polygon, it embodies the battle-tested paradigm of extruding from 2D sketches of more traditional CAD packages. Obviously, there are no sketches in OpenSCAD, but by plotting points with a polygon, we get something that's pretty similar, and then being able to add radii to them and using that as the basis of the majority of your parts, it's both productive and intuitive. To make this a little bit more concrete, let's look at a part that I put together on a live stream. Even though it has some complex radii involved, it was quick to put together leveraging this method. To make the cylindrical clamp piece, we'll do a rotational extrude of a polygon, but to make the polygon, we'll start with the polyline helper to keep track of each of our points. Because the polygon will be symmetrical, we'll mirror the points and straight away we get a square from just two points. Let's add more points to squeeze in the center. We'll then move into the poly round to add curves. The syntax here is that it's an array of X, Y radius points. So we can start adding a radius to each point. Now it can be rotated. Moving on to the arm, this will be a simple triangle with three points. No rounding is needed. We'll then shell this part and add a grid pattern to the inside. The API here is that the first child of the shell 2D is the shell, but any subsequent children are used to fill the inside of the shell. We're able to define a min R, which will allow us to make the transition into the walls of the shell much better. Because we can, we'll round the ends of this extrusion too. Lastly, we'll make the mouth plate. The goal here is to have it transition smoothly into the arm. This part will be symmetrical, so we'll mirror those points as well. We'll taper in the part with another point, then we'll extend it a little, and we can get our shape from just four points. We'll then add radii to smooth those transitions. Lastly, we'll extrude it with some rounding. And now all that's left to do is assemble the parts and then add some final touches that we won't go over step by step, like adding these wings and a few holes for bolts. This part, by the way, is supposed to be a camera mount that attaches to my monitor stand. And the plan was to print it and show it in action, but fate decided that my 3D printer would die just as I modeled this part. I've got a bunch of relevant links below for you, a link to the code on GitHub, as well as docs I've written for how to use it. If you want to follow my work, obviously there is a subscribe button, but I gently but firmly encourage you to sign up to my newsletter, as it's a simple and robust way of me informing you about what I'm up to without relying on the YouTube algorithm. And really, do you want to be told what to do by an algorithm? All right, to sign off, I'm going to leave you with some time lapses of me using the round ending library.